Thank you, Coach. Um, what one question would you like to answer, but can't, due to the not ongoing NCA double investigation? You like how I did that? You're, that was really good. What's your name? Uh oh. <laughs> Lisa. That's the question. What, Lisa? Sports. Oh, good job. Yeah. Um, It's Friday, July 30th, 2011. Welcome to episode two of my video log, which I'm calling Kurt One's Pretentious Self-Indulgent Ass Hattery. First off, I need to say thank you to the Sports Brewery guys. Um, they're a Northwest-based website. They cover all the Northwest sports, particularly Oregon, and uh, they do a lot of comical stuff as well. Always been a big supporter of my video work. Of late, they've really been supporting me. They ran, they wrote an article for the Big Lebowski, Willie Lyles mashup video that I made, and they also did one for my first episode of this video log. They called me uh, a pretentious dick, which might be the nicest thing that anybody has ever said to me. First of all, YouTube update. I have been very hard at work. Uh, getting as much of the old highlights back up online as I possibly can. Everyone's been bugging me about when I'm going to get this play up and that play up. I'm working on it. The 1996 season is now completely up. Everything that I had, I am on to early 1997. I will continue uploading stuff and I'll let you know as I progress. But I'm going chronologically. So right now, early 1997 highlights are up. If you want to see things by game, I have everything separated out by each game on my YouTube page. So if you click on playlists, then you'll see all of the individual playlists are sorted out by game. You can click on the specific game that you want, and when that opens up, there you go. All the best plays from that particular game. I'll continue uploading videos whenever I can find the time to do so. Uh, hopefully I will get caught up to present day, but that's gonna take a while. Probably not until this season is actually over. It takes a lot of time to make those videos, so be patient, I am getting them up. Also, I have been writing a lot for this past week in preparation for something that I am now proud to publicly announce. I teased it last week, and I spoke with the person, they said, go ahead, make it a formal. So, I have been working with Charles Fisher, better known as Fish Duck to Oregon fans, for the launch of a new website. So here is the big, big news. Starting August 3rd, www.fishduck.com, all one word, will be live. If, you'd follow, if you've followed Fish Duck for years, you already know he does the best analyses of Oregon sports around. Very knowledgeable, very detailed. His writings are now going to be organized on his own website, complete with videos showing what he's looking at, not just very detailed writing, but it's also going to be a message board, there's going to be videos, new articles popping up every day. This site is for the intelligent Oregon fan, the ones that want to know detailed info about how and why Oregon football is what it is, without getting all into all of the negative trolling arguments that inevitably occur on the other websites. So trollers need not apply, as this will not be a site for those wanting to pick an online fight or call others out. So be a safe place for the intelligent fans who want to discuss in detail and learn. You want to be an internet tough guy, stick to eDuck, DSA, those places. I'm sure they will fit your trolling needs. So there are going to be numerous talented writers providing articles on a daily basis to fishduck.com. And I'm very proud, very honored to have been asked to be a contributor for this site. I will be writing twice a week for fishduck.com on Wednesdays and Sundays. I will have articles running. Now it's going to be split up to where once a week I'm going to have an article going over current events and the other week I'm going to have a, my own column called DuckTales. Now what DuckTales is going to be is a weekly column focusing on events, particular players, particular games from Oregon's past. Everyone knows me as kind of the unofficial University of Oregon historian already because of all my YouTube videos. So I'm going to be writing and tying in with my videos particular interest pieces from Oregon's past. I already have the first one prepped, ready to go, and it's going to be a monster. This one is going to change your perspective on Oregon football in the mid-90s. 
I was very fortunate to have a very lengthy conversation with Kenny Wheaton and Jaya Figueres, and they told me some things that are going to shock you, stun you, completely change your whole perspective on Oregon football in the mid-1990s. It was for a lifelong Oregon fan, like trying crack for the first time, like being locked in a candy store all night. It was amazing. And I only hope that I can do this story justice. Now, it's such a good story, and there's so many details associated with it, we had to split them into a three-parter. So, fishduck.com goes live August 3rd. Starting on August 4th, part one of my article involving Kenny Wheaton and Jaya Figueres in mid-1990s Oregon Duck football will be live on fishduck.com. Part two will run the 5th. Part three, the conclusion, will be August 6th three-part article to launch the website all about mid-90s Oregon football. It's going to be long, but hey, I know everyone out there wants to know what Kenny Wheaton really thinks sparked the Oregon Ducks football revolution, what turned everything around. You will not want to miss this. It starts August 4th, runs through August 6th. Thereafter, you'll be able to find my columns every Wednesday and Sunday on fishduck.com. I'm already working on additional articles for fishduck.com. I'm going to be interviewing Kristen McLemore here in the next coming days. I'm trying to also set up an interview with Danny O'Neill and Scott Frost, but they're not returning my emails right now. So uh, maybe that'll come together or maybe I have to come up with another idea. We'll see how it comes together. Now, as for this week in Duck. The media frenzy continues as it was Pac-12 Media Day and Chip Kelly made the rounds first in Los Angeles, then in New York, then at the ESPN studios, along with David Paulson, or as we call him, his name is David Paulson. Fight Club reference. David is a class act and he's not someone who says a lot. He lets his actions do his talking. So it was kind of funny watching some of his teammates call him out during the live media press conference, seeing what the over-under was going to be on his total answers. Carson York said it at 300 words that David Paulson would say during the entire thing. The unofficial count, according to Jonathan Adams, was 93 words total out of David Paulson's mouth (laughs) over the course of the press conference. Is it affecting you guys at all as far as players and and the way you're approaching the season or the way you're approaching having to deal with the media? Uh, no, I don't think it's really affected us as players. Uh, we're really just focused on uh, getting better this summer, uh, working hard in the weight room, uh, doing some seven-on-seven, seven, trying to come together as a team and get ready for this uh, upcoming season. Of course, uh, there was an epic confrontation that everyone knew was going to come. John Clownzano tries to ask Chip Kelly a question, and about a minute in, Clown hasn't even asked his question yet, and he just gets reprimanded, told to sit down. It was a thing of beauty. It's up on YouTube. Here's a short clip. Knows pretty well. He says he may have broken Excuse rules. me. At this time, uh, Oregon has released a statement, and we're doing this for the 2011 Pac-12 football this, season. This is about so, the season. I uh, appreciate it, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll Does that concern it. you at all? Does that concern you? That- you know, I, I can understand... Well, no, actually, I can't understand why reporters keep asking when they know damn well that Chip Kelly can't comment on this while there's an ongoing investigation. All he's going to say is, I can't comment on it. There was another article that popped up just the other day that was even worse. Greg Doyle, I hope I'm saying that right because he's a complete asshat, from CBS Sports wrote an article saying that because Jim Tressel was fired and Butch Davis was fired, that Chip Kelly needs to be fired right now. Why? His only reasoning was that, you know, his logic was, I know it when I see it. Really? Because what have you seen? In the case of Butch Davis and Jim Tressel, their firing came after the findings of an NCAA investigation came out. There's still an ongoing investigation right now. Why the hell would Chip Kelly be fired halfway through an investigation? You know, if the findings come out and they deem that there's nothing wrong, you look like a complete moron. Everyone who's calling for Chip's head right now looks like a complete moron because they're doing so before all the facts have come out. 
You know, I don't watch a movie or read a book and halfway through stop and then, you know, analyze how the ending went. You know, I, I'm not going to watch the first 30 minutes of The Usual Suspects and then say, oh, that ending was lame. It may go down as the only time for a while now that a beaver will beat a duck. But they were about to do an interview with Chip Kelly on Sports Center, and it got preempted so that they could talk to the human turtle, John Clayton, breaking news that Chad Johnson, I'm not going to call him by his changed name because it's ridiculous, Chad Johnson, the Oregon State Beaver for half a semester who never attended a single class, was signed by the New England Patriots. And so they preempted an entire segment interviewing Chip Kelly to talk to the human turtle, John Clayton, about Chad Johnson. Whatever. Okay, so one beaver beat a duck today. That's just, once again, showing ESPN's complete delusion. But the cool thing about being able to talk about that is the fact that the NFL lockout is now over. Yay, we're going to get professional football after all. So start your fantasy leagues now. The cool thing is a lot of ducks are getting camp invites. I can just imagine the phones were going crazy as soon as the lockout was over because uh, time's ticking here. They've got to get into camp. They've got to learn playbooks. They've got to get going and get into shape, have the, the preseason, and then play the regular season all in a month. That's ridiculous. So by my current count, nine Oregon Ducks have been in invited to NFL camps. That's not including Casey Matthews, who of course was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Jeff Mayle is now a Houston Texan. Spencer Paysinger is a New York Giant. Brandon Bear is joining the Kansas City Chiefs. Kenny Rowe is a San Francisco 49er. DJ Davis is an Atlanta Falcon. Thomas Jackson is joining the Baltimore Ravens. Bo Thran is now a San Diego Charger. Also, Kellen Clemens was signed by the Washington Redskins, so cool to see Kellen continuing his career. And the interesting one was that Jeremiah Masoli got signed by the San Francisco 49ers. And as I had been predicting for a long time now, if he got any sort of shot at the pros, it would not be as a quarterback. And now my random tweet of the week. This week, you should be checking out the Joy Formidable. They're a Welsh trio. They uh, are fronted by a female guitar player, Ritzy, Ritzy Bryan, who is a phenomenal guitarist. And they're just great Brit rock. If you like modern Brit rock that is a little bit more complex than your average 4-4 standard pop music, that has a lot of heavy guitar feedback, is a little experimental, still has some pop sensibilities and fits into the whole shoegazer genre. If you like stuff like Catherine Wheel and Low and My Bloody Valentine, and if you really like the, the Yuck album, which I do, you will love The Joy Formidable. It is my pick right now for the best album of 2011. That's just my own personal taste. It's the album I've listened to more than anything else over the past seven months. So check it out, The Joy Formidable. The album is called The Big Roar. Well, that's about it for me this week. Uh, I'm busy working on videos and articles for fishduck.com. Check out the Solid Verbal podcast at solidverbal.com, Sports Chat 503 Guys here on YouTube, and the sportsbrewery.com. Also, you can find me on all the Oregon Ducks message boards as K, K Triple E Triple R Triple T One, you know, Kurt One. I'm on eDuck, Addicted to Quack, Duck Sports Authority. Duck Territory, Chat for Quacks, uh, the Facebook group Ducked Up on Quack, uh, and here on YouTube. Reminder, August 4th, www.fishduck.com. The site will be launching August 3rd. My article about Jaya Figueres and Kenny Wheaton will be going up starting on August 4th, running through August 6th. Check it out. See you next week, duck fans. Same duck time, same duck channel. Go Ducks.